Hi everyone, Caitlin James here from Scalp Micropigmentation Australia and welcome to our five minute fast facts on scalp micropigmentation interviews with Pro Artist Series, which um, today we're going to be having a guest speaker here. He's not actually a scalp micropigmentation artist himself, but he knows just about everything there is to know about scalp micropigmentation. He's all the way from the UK in our um, He's, in, he's the owner of our online community of scalp micropigmentation artists and communa, consumer information. It's a company called Team Micro. Today we have with us Damien Porter. So welcome, Damien. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about your own personal experience with getting scalp micropigmentation on yourself many years ago. Uh, and how did you discover the treatment um, as a treatment option for hair loss for yourself? Sure. Um, so I used to work for a publishing company um, here in the UK and uh, one of my clients asked me to go out and see them. Uh, they had this crazy idea that they didn't want to talk about on the phone. And uh, I sat, um, it turns out that the, uh, that company was um, a company called His Hair Clinic, which um, people are probably familiar with. They, they started SMP here in the UK. Um, and I thought it was a crazy, stupid idea, but they asked me to be the director of marketing. So um, I kind of got involved with the business. And in all honesty, I, I wasn't particularly fussed about losing my hair, but I ran out of reasons not to. I mean, I was four years into the industry and I'd seen all these amazing transformations. And people kept saying, why don't you get it done? And in the end, I didn't have a reason. I didn't have a good answer to that question. So I got it done. And um, I think it was probably a year after I got it done that I realized how much, uh, how much better I felt. You know, it's strange. I, I didn't feel unconfident before, but I felt so much better afterwards. It's really difficult to explain. Um, I, think, um, I think what it does is that when you look back on old photographs of yourself and you think, you know, you, know, just, you just realize how much you were thinning out and you just wish that you'd, you wish you could go back in time and redo those photographs, but just looking better. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of, kind of weird, but yeah, that's, 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 my, that's my story. Yeah. And so how long have you had your scalp micropigmentation for now? Uh, I had mine done in 2013. Yeah. So it is seven years. Yeah, about seven years old. Yeah. So after you had the treatment done, how have you seen our industry change, say, over the last six years? I guess it's the same as with anything. Um, the uh, you know the that the process has become more refined and sophisticated over time. Um, I mean, some of the work that was world class six years ago is subpar now, you know, and that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, you know, we're just getting better and better as an industry at producing world class work. We're seeing a lot less bad work. And the standard is is being raised. So you know, when new people are entering SMP as as a you know when they enter the industry, the the, the baseline of quality that they're operating at is better than it was years ago because they have greater availability, the, the greater availability of training. Um, I think support and mentorship has come a really long way as well. Um, and this Facebook community has really blown up, and and that's that provides a lot of support as well. So I think what another thing that is happening is that years ago there was a there was a misunderstanding over where the benchmark should be, and we saw a lot of clients who were really happy with how their treatment looked, and we'd look at it and we'd, you know, uh, we 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 weren't so we weren't convinced. Whereas now I think the awareness of what is possible and what should be expected is far higher. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's translated to artists who are joining the industry they see the work that some of the very best artists in the world are doing and they use that as a benchmark so they understand that they have to strive that little bit harder to produce that that, that level of work so i think a lot of things have changed i don't i don't think we could even compare smp five six years ago to what it is today yeah and so having said how how far we have come as an industry where do you think our industry is heading then in the next six years <laughs> well, that's the sixty-four million dollar question. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, I, I think that we are going to see. I think we're going to see some positive and some negative changes. Um, you know, we we cannot ignore the uh, the the laws of supply and demand. You know, so we are going to see SMP become commoditized as more and more people enter the business. 
Um, but I believe that that's going to create even more so than we have now a place for those clinics that excel above all the rest because as the industry becomes commoditized um, we're going to see an increase in I don't know I just I just I don't think it's going to be good for the overall quality because a lot of people are going to treat SMP as an add-on to their main business and to be really passionate about SMP and to really get good at it you've got to have momentum you've got to do lots and lots of SMP work and if it's an add-on if it's one of 20 services that you offer you're never going to build that momentum Mm -hmm. So it's the dedicated SMP clinics, I think, that over time are going to be able to hold. Yeah, they're going to they're going to continue to charge that a little bit more, and they're going to continue to be, you know, the the, the choice for those that do their their research. Um, I guess my my worry is I, I don't want every street corner to have an SMP company, and the quality that they deliver being the benchmark by which our entire industry is judged. You know, because a lot of people get their head done because their friend or their father or their uncle or their colleague had it done and they think it's amazing and they, they then make an inquiry themselves. That's how a lot of clients come into the business. So we just want to hope that their friend or their colleague or their uncle or, their, or whatever had a good job, um, you know, because that's how we're going to hit the mainstream. So I just, I just hope that we're able to ensure that the standards remain high um, I don't think it's realistic to expect the industry to regulate itself in that way. I think the best of the best do do that. But as the industry expands, that's probably that's, that's not going to happen as much. I think the best thing we can do is to educate the consumer so that they understand what they should expect. And if, they're, if, a, if there's an S&P company in their area that isn't delivering that standard, then that S&P company simply won't get the work, which will force them to strive for better. Mm -hmm. or force them out the market and I think maintaining that level that standard that level of realism is key to everything that we're trying to do um, because ultimately everything that we're doing as an industry is paid for by the number of people that want to get their heads done and that's affected by their by how they perceive SMP yeah yeah excellent so you have a company called team micro which was previously called scalp guru where did the idea of starting this online community come from and uh when or how long has it been going now uh it wasn't it wasn't actually an online community at first um i guess i've always been i've always enjoyed writing and i was uh, working on a freelance basis for three major SMP companies and um, I wanted to do something for myself um, just just as an outlet for my kind of desire to write I suppose um, and I've always run various different businesses as well as the consultancy stuff so I guess I just needed to I wanted something to um, to to pour my creativity into that was that was something that I was building for you know for me rather than uh, rather than for my clients I suppose um and so it started out as a as a simple blog site um and it just grew from there um the traffic just started increasing more and more and and then the um uh, that site uh, then morphed into um a, a facebook group which was pretty small at the time uh, we then ran the first meeting of minds in the uk um and from the meeting of minds we launched the online store and then from there we launched our consultancy business so things have grown organically to a certain extent um but when we first launched we had no intention of making it wasn't a business we, we had no intention of making any money from it it wasn't a revenue generator it was just for it was it was an outlet really for just just um just to be able to write about about the topic that we love that that's what it started as and it's just gone from there it's been fantastic mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so tell us a little bit, what is actually on your Team Micro website um, and the Facebook pages that might be useful to a client that's researching having scalp micropigmentation as a hair loss solution? Sure. So uh, teammicro.com is, uh, is split into, into two very defined, distinct areas, one for consumers and one for artists. Uh, the consumer side of things is designed to educate them so that they understand um, kind of what we were talking about before about benchmarking. So if they're going to have SMP, then we want them to have a really good experience. And for them to have that experience, they have to be armed with the right tools. And that's ensuring that they understand how the process works, what questions they need to ask during the consultation process. 
um, and also what level of treatment is, um, you know, what standard of treatment they should realistically be striving for so that when they're, choose when they're choosing a clinic, they can look at their portfolios and, and, and understand whether that work is, is, is good or not so good or, you know, without having some kind of standard in place, they, they simply don't, they simply don't, don't know. Um, so it's there, it's there as a place where they can get answers to all of their questions and to understand not, not only what happens during their procedure, but what the long-term implications are after their procedure. So they have to go in with, with, with their eyes wide open. You know, SMP is not perfect, it has limitations. And the more they understand that process um, and, and, and what it really involves, the more satisfaction they're gonna get from their procedure because their outcome is exactly what they were expecting. Mm -hmm. Does that, does I think that answers your question. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Um, and also tell us, how are you supporting the SMP um, artists with your annual conferences that you're holding? And why did you decide to start these amazing events for us? Uh, well, the SMP industry is a really fragmented business, you know, so you've got there's, there's one or two large companies, but the majority are solo practitioners or like like your own company, Caitlin, you have a small team. Um, but the ma majority of companies, um, you know, they stay as, as a single, a single artist working out a single office and it can be quite isolating. And it's the same, it's the same as anything, you know, these, these guys need, you know, these guys and girls need, they need motivation, they need togetherness, they need unity, they want to feel like a part of something. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's good for our industry to do that too. If we want to maintain standards to a certain extent, then we have to have that togetherness. Um, so the the main reason is is, is exactly for that, uh, but also it gives us a way because there there was no central point of the industry before before T Micro was there. So we wanted a way that if we wanted to steer the industry in a certain way, that we could do that together. We can make decisions together about about you know, about what the industry needs, and and we could have at least some kind of collaborative collective of people who could do that together because no no individual can do that you can't i can't we have to do it together um so that's largely the reason um as a second part of the answer to your question the reason we continued is because after our first event what we found was something something really re remarkable happened so we had an industry that was uh, everyone was kind of doing their own thing and people were very secretive and they didn't want to share the, what pigments they were using or what techniques they were using and everyone was very kind of defensive for want of a better way of putting it. Um, and uh, after the conference, the first conference in Leeds, we didn't notice this straight away, but about three or four months after, we started, people started saying, hey, you know, the, the Brits were going out to America to train and the Americans were going to Australia and the, yeah, the, the, the people from Asia were coming to the UK. It was all, and what, what was happening was that people were making these little connections. So somebody who they'd met at the, at the event, um, you know, they'd happened to have a conversation with somebody that had, they'd gotten really well with them, that had a really interesting discussion and these relationships were forming. And it's something that we take for granted now. It happens all the time. But you've got to bear in mind back then, social media was not as big a part of the S&P industry as, 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 um, as, as it is now. Um, so although that has grown organically and exponentially from that point, I'd like to think that we played a fairly big role in at least getting that, that process started. Um, and that's why we continued the event, because we saw a really tangible, real-world benefit to the industry from that after the first event so that kept us motivated to keep going yeah excellent um and we certainly all really enjoy catching up every year um so can't wait for the next one um but yeah i mean that's, that's the other thing we all have fun and we all we all have a few glasses of wine and we meet up with our friends that we've not seen in a while yeah. so to a certain extent you know i mean what what other opportunity do we have you know you come from adelaide australia you know, we have friends, as you know, we have Renata in Canada, we have Pam and Teresa in the US and lots and lots of other friends who come and all meet. And it's the only time we get to meet each other. And, you know, that's that's a big part of it as well. It's we enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for a client who is looking into um, having scalp micropigmentation, is there anything that you can suggest um, to them that are doing their research? How is it that they can come to the decision on choosing the right scalp micropigmentation artist for them? I think it's all about the personal connection because 
it's not just a case of going into the clinic and having your head done. You're making a long-term commitment to that artist and they should be making a long-term commitment to you. So, you know, you've got the consultation process, you've got the, you've got the treatment itself. But then as time goes on, as the years progress, you know, you need somebody who you have a good relationship with who can give you honest advice when it comes to assessments, you know, whether or not you need top-ups, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that person is going to be a part of your life for a long time. So um, I think that personal connection is really important. Um, of course, we need, to look, we need to make sure that you look at their portfolio, that not only that they have a good portfolio, but they have work within their portfolio that is a reasonably close match to what you're looking for so that you know that um, you, know, you, can, you can get an idea of what SOP might look like for you with your skin type and your preferences and that, that type of thing. So for example, if you have alopecia areata, you can have a really experienced artist, but if they have no experience of treating clients with alopecia, then that's something that you need to factor in. So there's certain things like that. Um, I don't think it necessarily has to be the artist with the most experience or the one who's been around for the longest. It's got to be the one who, who offers you that combination of confidence in their ability, um, confidence in the level of service that they're going to provide. Um, somebody who, who frankly gives a shit. You want someone who is, um, who's got your back. You know, and I think that's some of the criticism that some of the larger companies have had over the years is that it's become a little bit more impersonal. And that's that's why so many of these artists that are able to master that personal touch um, are doing so well. Um, and of course, location does play a part. It's not the most important thing. But if you're making multiple trips, then what you're really looking for is somebody who you know, who ticks all those boxes. And location is a minor box, although it's still it's still definitely a box. And I think, yeah, just trust your trust your gut instinct and if you're not if you don't trust your gut instincts then look at reviews um have another conversation with, with with the artist that you're considering and be honest say look i really want to get this done i'm nervous about pulling the trigger you know i'm looking for some reassurance and you'll soon work out if that technician is is has got your back or not by the by their responses to that yeah Excellent. Well, there you have it. Thank you to the man dedicated to the cause from Team Micro all the way from the UK and for being on our five minutes fast facts pro scalp micropigmentation artist series. I'm sure you have made many of our viewers and listeners feel more comfortable about the idea of having scalp micropigmentation. Um, so we hope to have you back at another time. Thank you, Damien. Cool. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. Um, if you have any questions or comments, we would like to hear from you. So don't be shy. You can either call or email us. Um, feel free to pop something in the comments below and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.